You guys are going to be shocked because you think you know. You think you know me, but you, do you really? Do you really? You might think one of the things that frustrates me that gets in my craw the most is skincare influencers spreading nonsensical misinformation about sunscreen causing skin cancer. Yeah, that really enrages me. Don't don't get it twisted. Um, or people claiming that tanning is healthy. Yeah, that makes me angry. But here's something that some of you probably have picked up on, but maybe you're new here. One thing that I cannot not stand, and it, it actually pains me to even think this might be happening to you, is spending money on things that are a waste of time, that don't bring any benefit, any joy. It's very easy to buy dumb stuff in this day and age when we are constantly inundated by all sorts of visual stimulation to acquire things. And we cannot ignore the elephant in the room, which is the theme of this channel, and that is skincare products. People spend spending hundreds of dollars a month on anti-aging skincare products, all of these elaborate skincare routines that you see on the internet. You're spending all this money, but is it actually doing anything to slow down, reverse, prevent aging, or to help your skin overall be healthier? We're gonna get into that in today's video. We're gonna be talking about science-backed anti-aging skincare that can actually work, what actually has evidence behind it. Because one thing I know about you guys, is that you don't want to just follow trends. You want to know what actually works. So that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. And I'm going to point out what is complete fluff, complete smoke and mirrors. You should just keep it moving. Okay. Aging skin happens for multiple reasons. A, it's just a normal part of life. Things are going to age as you are on the planet longer. A lot of skin aging is a result of cumulative sun exposure. Depending on your skin tone, this is going to manifest in different ways. So people who maybe are of a paler skin type are going to show more prominent wrinkles in areas where they have gotten a lot of sun exposure throughout their lifetime, as well as sallowness, yellowing of the skin, prominent pores, coarse wrinkling. People with more richly melanated skin types, however, do not show as profound wrinkling, but they do develop age spots, hyperpigmentation, uneven skin tone, and some coarse dry skin texture as well. The other big driver is your lifestyle habits, things like smoking, drinking alcohol in excess, having a bad diet, being overly stressed. And for women with menopause, you experience a decline in estrogen, and that has some effects on skin aging. In particular, women will experience a lot more wrinkling with menopause. This is interesting, however, as it may also be influenced by your overall skin tone. The appearance of these wrinkles with the decline in estrogen and menopause is different from um, wrinkles related to sun exposure. It's a totally different thing. It relates to a now state of estrogen deficient skin. But this may also be related to your overall skin tone, which is interesting because women who have richly melanated skin tones, they interestingly enough, tend to experience perimenopause and menopause earlier in life. They also tend to have symptoms of it for a longer period of time and more intensely. However, however, they don't appear to show the estrogen deficient wrinkling with menopause to the same extent, at least, as those with paler skin types. So it seems as though not only is their skin resisting ultraviolet radiation induced wrinkling, but it seems to stand up a little bit better in the face of estrogen deficiency. And it could be related to something going on in the deeper layers of the skin above and beyond the richer melanin content in the top part of the skin. What actually works, that's why you're here. Number one, without a doubt, no matter your your skin tone is going to be sunscreen. I don't care if it's a chemical sunscreen, a mineral sunscreen, or a hybrid sunscreen. Daily use of sunscreen, not just intermittent, but daily use of sunscreen can help reverse some existing signs of sun damage, some existing signs of skin aging. It can also, of course, help prevent. If you have a paler skin type, this might look like the fading of some age spots. This might also look like an improvement and a reduction in the formation over time of age-related wrinkles, and this might also look like a reduction in the formation of these little pre-skin cancers that tend to pop up, which are pesky. If you have more richly melanated skin, this might look like an overall reduction in uneven skin tone, discoloration, and dark spots. And yes, that has been shown in clinical studies on people with richly melanated skin. Number two ingredient that is actually evidence-based that definitely can work is some sort of topical retinoid, whether it be triferritine, tazeratine, tretinoin, 
adapalene, all of these, all of these have the ability to help reverse some of the visible signs of skin aging. They work to improve collagen production in the deeper layers of the skin, improving wrinkling, and they also work to improve discoloration at the surface of the skin. They help slow down uh, collagen destruction as they suppress activation of collagen destroying enzymes. They also help with the differentiation, the maturation, if you will, of the epidermis so you don't get the buildup of the dry rough skin texture. Now these are for the most part, aside from adapalene here in the US, these are prescription only. However, there are cosmetic forms of vitamin A that also can be effective for reversing the visible signs of skin aging. Retinol and retinaldehyde are cosmetic ingredients that likewise can help improve the appearance of the signs of skin aging. They're not as well studied as their prescription medication counterparts, but they can work to improve the visible signs of skin aging. And in studies, they have been shown to improve collagen production, although those are kind of claims that a cosmetic can't make for legal reasons, but they can improve the appearance of aging skin. We'll say that's what they can claim, and they have been shown to do that. Number three flies under the radar, but it is alpha hydroxy acids, whether it be glycolic acid or ammonium lactate, the salt of lactic acid. These are probably some of the more robustly studied alpha hydroxy acids that have been shown to be beneficial for the needs of and for reversing some of the visible signs of skin aging. These ingredients help to exfoliate dry, rough skin texture, and they also help to improve the water content in the skin. They are humectants. Lactic acid, interestingly enough, at shrinks above 12%, not only helps normalize the turnover processes and smoothing out and exfoliating the top part of the skin, the epidermis, but with consistent use, it's been shown to improve the thickness of the deeper layers of the skin as well. And you can find that in just good old fashioned amlactin. Amlactin, yeah, it's an anti-aging product that really flies under the radar. The other one that I think does not get enough attention, even though it gets a lot of attention with regards to its benefits for anti-aging is an antioxidant, a B vitamin that is widely found in skincare products. It's to the point where you just go into a drugstore, uh, Walmart, Sephora, what have you, and just gesture broadly in the skincare aisle, likely you're going to land on something that has it. And you probably already have a product that you are using that contains this ingredient and it's niacinamide. First of all, it's an antioxidant, so it may help your skin handle the damaging effects of environmental exposures that age your skin like sun and pollution. Also, it helps improve moisture content and moisturizing the skin and skin barrier function, which ultimately can improve the look of dehydration lines. It's good for improving dark spots because it disrupts the transfer of pigment packets from melanocytes to the surrounding uh, keratinocytes of the epidermis. It also calms down redness and it is one of the few ingredients that has been shown to reverse sallow skin, skin yellowing related to glycation. I have a whole video on this topic. I got my video on skin sallowness. I break down the science there, but niacinamide seems to be helpful for that. Let's talk about its uh, competitor, vitamin C. Vitamin C has been shown to improve collagen production, has been shown to improve some of the signs of sun damage. It has also been shown to improve hyperpigmentation. So lots of benefits. The one that has been shown to do things that you are presumably seeking is ascorbic acid, but not just any ascorbic acid. It has to be stable and it has to be the right pH. And so the formulation that has a lot of evidence behind it, I will say, is ascorbic acid plus vitamin E plus ferulic acid. So that is what is in that very popular SkinCeuticals vitamin C serum that's so expensive. But there are other brands out there, other products, less expensive, similar formulation that probably get the job done, okay? Hard to say because no one goes in and studies these things in any sort of rigorous fashion. There are vitamin C esters, other ingredients that are frequently found in vitamin C products that don't have the data behind them that ascorbic acid does. These include things like magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, sodium ascorbyl phosphate, 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid, ascorbyl glucoside. Don't get it twisted. These ingredients likely have some benefits for your skin. They probably work as antioxidants to cut down on oxidative stress. They may to a certain 
extent help with dark spots. We just don't have a lot of research on them. And importantly, they would need to get into the skin and be converted to ascorbic acid in order to really do those things that we want. And it's not clear that they do that. We don't have good studies on that. So those are kind of out there floating around, easy to fall for, but may not end up doing much as far as anti-aging. Then we have peptides. There are so many peptides. It seems like every other month, a new peptide has been farted out by a cosmetic manufacturer, but peptides, they claim to improve collagen production. They claim to reverse some of the signs of skin aging. They claim to tackle dark spots. Some of them even claim to act like Botox, aka Argireline, for example. And they do have a little bit of research to support these claims, but unfortunately, most of the mechanistic data supporting these claims comes from preclinical studies. And then the actual clinical studies with these ingredients on humans shows improvement in like wrinkles, but doesn't actually show any changes in the biologic parameters that were demonstrated in the preclinical cells in a dish study. So in other words, it's hard to know that they are doing much above and beyond helping to moisturize the skin, which we already know that moisturizing the skin improves the look of wrinkles just by hydration, space filling, and softening out those lines. So I like peptides. I use them in a lot of products. I find that my skin gets along well with various peptides. I do think they help improve water content. Many of them have decent um, cosmetic studies backing up that they reduce trans epidermal water loss and hydrate the skin. So I have no problem using them. But if you are sitting there debating whether or not to buy a very expensive peptide serum that is not in your budget that you don't have the funds for, please walk on by. Please walk on by because it's not going to make or break your anti-aging skincare goals. As far as the science, it's just not quite there. But honestly, there are so many products these days that use peptides that are pretty affordable. And so they're great moisturizing ingredients is what I can say. Now, here's an ingredient that um, is frequently talked about when it comes to, especially uh, women with what is described as estrogen deficient skin. So topical estrogen may actually help to improve collagen in the skin. It's not super well studied. There are some clinical studies that do show it does improve dermal thickness to use a topical estrogen. So a lot of dermatologists actually recommend this to their patients. Whereas other dermatologists are like, I need more data to feel comfortable recommending this. Even though technically it should not cause any unwanted side effects throughout the body because it is a hormone that you are applying to your skin. Studies that we have don't suggest that it really could cause true adverse effects. There are some studies though on topical estrogen that suggest, yeah, it can have some effects at distant sites perhaps. So more research is needed for many dermatologists to feel comfortable recommending it, but some dermatologists have been using it and recommending it for years. What are some other possible side effects with using a topical estrogen? Well, one of concern is that estrogens can cause unwanted pigmentation. Some dermatologists have even observed localized hyperpigmentation in areas where the estrogen creams are being applied. Also, there is the possibility that it could bring out unwanted red marks, prominent dilated telangiectasias is another possible theoretical concern as well. So what does that mean? It means, yeah, there's evidence to suggest it can improve collagen production, but there are potential side effects. So the risk to benefit ratio is not quite clear, especially, I would say, especially for women who have very richly melanated skin. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the wrinkling that comes about with menopause and the decline in estrogen, women with richly melanated skin, it doesn't seem to affect them at least to the same degree. And again, this decline in estrogen bringing on wrinkles, it's outside of sun damage causing wrinkles. This is a separate wrinkle causer that still does not seem to affect richly melanated skin types. So they don't have the sun induced wrinkling and they don't have the menopausal induced wrinkling related to estrogen decline to the same extent. Like you compare side by side and they just don't have it. Like they seem to not, their skin doesn't seem to respond to that degree. So then it becomes a question of, is the topical estrogen potentially doing you more harm than good? Like boosting collagen production for what? Um, is it going to help with the dark spots that you are more likely to have? No, it could potentially cause those, which you don't want. And I think it's reasonable to await more research in the future with regards to the long-term safety, even though for all intents and purposes, the research that we have suggests we really shouldn't be concerned. But yeah, these are ingredients that 
can work. It can make a difference. You don't need to use all of them. The most important one is sunscreen and that, that does a lot. That does a lot. Sunscreen and if, if right for you, a topical retinoid can do a lot. Let's talk about what is, yeah, not likely doing anything, but making the wallet thinner. And that is growth factors. So growth factors are another category that gets a lot of hype, but it's like the science does not really add up for putting these things on your face and having them do some sort of actual thing to your skin for lack of better words. I have a video all about growth factor serums. I reviewed the growth factor serum from The Ordinary. People have concerns that putting a growth factor on the skin might accelerate the formation of skin cancers. That is a valid concern, but at the same time, it kind of speaks to the fact that because we've never seen this happening amongst people using the growth factors, they probably don't work in the first place to actually do what growth factors in the human body do. Instead, they probably work similar to many peptides, I believe, by improving water content in the skin. The other ingredients though that are also smoke and mirrors, all hype, very little, if not any, clinical science and actual human skin, actual human volunteers to support the hype or you spending your money on is gonna be exosomes and PDRN. And I have videos ranting all about these <laughs> ingredients and what a wild west of product claims they surround. So those are ingredients, you know, in your skincare routine. At the end of the day, keep it real simple and consistent. Keep it consistent. Sunscreen and moisturizer, that alone will help a lot. Sunscreens are moisturizers as a side note. That'll help a lot. Make sure you're washing your face at the end of the day to remove dirt, sebum, cosmetic residues that could be irritating for your skin. That simple skincare routine, cleanse, moisturize, sunscreen, it does a lot, all right? It does a lot. Retinoid on top of that can actually get in there and also help to effectively reverse some of the visible signs of skin aging and improve wrinkles and improve hyperpigmentation, dark spots, and improve barrier function. All right, guys, that's a wrap up with regards to science-backed skincare ingredients for anti-aging that actually work, that actually work. You can see that just by keeping it simple, you save yourself money and it makes it a lot easier to just plug and chug. Do the same thing daily and that's what it takes actually to see results. It's boring, but it's simple, effective, stay consistent, it makes a difference. It takes time for things to start working in the skin. Now, of course, above and beyond the scope of today's video, there are so many lifestyle choices that you can start making today if you're not already, or you can pat yourself on the back if you're already doing them, um, that make a huge difference in how our skin and our total body ages. And on the end slide, I'm going to put a recent video where I rant and rave about these habits. So you definitely wanna check that one out next, especially if you are motivated to keep your skin healthy long term. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.